Welcome students to my YouTube channel Bharat Chem Study. Today we are going to study about chapter two, structure of atom for plus one class part one. A structure of atom according to Dalton atomic theory, atom is the smallest particle of matter and is indivisible. However, the discoveries in 19th and 20th centuries shows that atom has complex structure and is not indivisible. Atom consists of still small particles such as electron, proton, and neutrons called subatomic particles. So this is the structure of an atom. In the center, nucleus is present, which is containing neutron and proton, and electrons revolve around the nucleus in a circular path called orbits. And the structure is shown as like this. A discovery of electron by J. J. Thomson discharge tube experiment. The experiment is in simplest form, consists of a cylindrical hard glass tube closed at the both hands, and it is called discharge tube or Crookes tube. It is fitted with two metallic electrodes. The tube is connected to a side through which it is evacuated to a desired pressure with the help of vacuum pump. The discharge tube is filled with gas under study, and the two electrodes are connected to a source of high voltage. During these experiments, the following observations are made. First one, when the discharge tube contains any gas at normal pressure, nothing is observed, even by applying high voltage between the two electrodes, and that means the gas means non-conducting. So this was the structure showing the discharge tube and the anode and cathode attached to the high voltage battery, and an evacuated tube is attached to the vacuum. To make the desired pressure in the tube, but when the pressure of the gas inside tube is decreased by pumping out of the gas with the help of vacuum pump, that is, when the pressure of the gas is desired about 10 to minus 2 atmosphere, the gas becomes conducting and light is emitted by the residual gas in the tube. The color of the light depends upon the nature of the gas taken. In small lighting was produced within the discharge tube on decreasing the pressure. Further. When the pressure of the gas in the discharge tube is further reduced, the glow becomes weak. At about 10 to minus 4 atmosphere pressure, the glow in the tube stops, but the gas continues to conduct electricity. Moreover, the glass tube at the end of anode began to glow with the fluorescent color and with the faint greenish light. So, on performing the discharge tube and by taking the perforated anode, it has been seen that at the back of the anode is shining or having lighting with the fluorescent color and then start glowing. So this is the observation done by J. J. Thompson and he was want to know that whether the gases conduct electricity or not and during this experiment he has observed that at the back of anode it start glowing with the fluorescent color. It was discovered that the glowing of the tube is due to this bombardment of the glass by certain rays emitted from cathode. These rays was named by J. J. Thompson as cathode rays. Now the properties of cathode rays. First, they travel in a straight line. They are made of material particles and had capacity to do work. When they pass through electric field, they get deflected towards positive electrode showing that they carry negative charge. Fourth property, when they strike a metal foil, they heat up the foil, that is, they also show heating effect. Fifth property, they cause ionization of a gas through which they pass. Sixth property, they produce X ray when strike a hard metal like tungsten. Seventh property, they affect the photographic plates. From all these observations, it is concluded that cathode ray consists of negative charge particle. And these particles are named as electrons by J. J. Thompson. The origin of cathode rays. The cathode rays are first produced from the material of the cathode and then from the gas inside the discharge tube due to bombardment of the gas molecule by the high speed electron emitted first from the cathode. And hence the origin of cathode rays is from the material and then in between the discharge tube. Charge and mass of electron. The charge of electron was calculated by R. A. Mulligan by his oil drop experiment and is found to be minus 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Actual mass of electron was calculated by J. J. Thompson as 
one of the part get deflected towards negative electrode and is called alpha rays while one of the part get deflected towards positive electrodes and named that beta rays and there are certain radiations which just do not move towards any of the electrode and move straight and these are called gamma rays so the following observations are observed from the previous experiment then one type of rays are deflected towards negative electrode which indicate that they carry positive charged particles and are called as alpha rays these rays are found to be consist of positive charged helium particles each particle has a mass of 4 amu and carries two unit positive charge the second type of rays were deflected towards positive electrode which show that these are negative charged these are called beta rays these particles have the same e over m value as that of cathode ray therefore beta rays were considered to be a stream of electrons the third type of ray were not deflected at all and therefore neutral these rays are called gamma rays these rays are regarded as high energy electromagnetization having no charge and negligible mass a thomson model of atom j thomson proposed that an atom consists of a uniform sphere in which positive charge is being from that that is distributed all over in the atom and it can be represented like this so this model is much like pudding or cake with a positive charge with the raising electrons embedded into it therefore this model is also called raisin pudding model and also called watermelon model because like watermelon all the red portion distributed all over and black seed are present in between somewhere similarly jay thompson say that that the positive charge is spread all over in the atom and negative particles are present that is electrons are present in between somewhere an important feature of this model is that the mass of the atom is considered to be evenly spread over the atom so this was the jay thompson model of atom which was later discarded by rutherford experiment now rutherford scattering experiment or rutherford model of atom in this experiment rutherford placed a radioactive substance in a lead block and it is constructed is constructed in such a way that only a narrow beam of alpha particle could escape through this and this beam is then passed through a thin gold foil and the observation are recorded on a circular photographic plate so when a beam is passed then the observation was observed on the photographic plates like this so when alpha particles strike the zinc sulfide screen they produce flashes of light which can be detected easily by examining different portion of the screen it possible to determine the proportion of alpha rays alpha particles which go deflected through various angle the following observation were made from the experiment first most of the alpha particle nearly 99% pass through the gold foil undeflected second a small fraction of alpha particle got deflected through a small angle third a few particle did not pass through the foil at all but scattered large deflection or even come back suffering a deflection of 180 degree but according to thomson model the positive charge is uniformly distributed and if so is possible then most of the alpha rays which are positive particle must be deflected back and a very few will be able to pass through it so why these of most of the particle alpha particles pass through the foil undeflected will not be explained by the jeden thompson model of atom and therefore the thompson model of atom was discarded now rutherford explained these observation as that since most of the alpha particle pass through the gold foil undeflected it means that there must be large empty space within the atom second the alpha particle are positively charged and have considerable mass they can be deflected back only if they come close to a heavy positive charge mass since some of the alpha particle deflected to a certain angle it means that there is a heavy positive charge present within the atom however this mass must be occupy a very small space within the atom because only a few alpha particle suffered large deflection 
third point the strong deflection or even bouncing back of alpha particle from the coil was explained by the direct collision of this alpha particle with a heavy positively charged mass the positively charged heavy mass which occupy only a small volume in the atom is called nucleus and it is supposed to be present within the center of the atom so depending upon these observation rutherford did his own model of atom by saying that the that the all mass of the atom is concentrated within the center of the atom and this center is called nucleus and there is a large space present between nucleus and electrons and most of the space between nucleus and electron is empty and electron revolved around the nucleus in circular path car orbit this was the model given by rutherford now cadwick experiment or discovery of neutron so after the discovery of proton and electrons it has been observed that there is very small space occupied by the nucleus and if the proton are to be present within the nucleus that there must be repulsion between them but because the nucleus is stable that means there are certain substances which are present within the nucleus which help in the stability of the nucleus which were further discovered as neutron by cadwick in 1933 cadwick identified a new particle of obtained from the bombardment of beryllium by alpha particles it has a unit mass and carry no charge it was named as neutron so beryllium having atomic mass 9 on a bombardment with helium having atomic mass 4 and atomic number 2 gave carbon with atomic number 6 and a neutron a particle a new particle is formed with the charge 0 and mass 1 and this particle is named as neutron now this table we have to learn first fundamental particle electron represented by e minus 1 0 where minus 1 is the charge and 0 is the mass so the mass of electron is assumed to be negligible discovered by jay thompson and the charge was minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb it, the mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg or 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 28 gram the e over m ratio is 1.76 into 10 to the power 8 coulomb per gram proton represented by p positive 1 1 by 1 which are positive 1 is the charge and mass is 1 it is discovered by goldstein e goldstein charge is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and the mass is 1.672 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg or 1.672 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams the e over m ratio for proton is 9.58 into 10 to the power 4 coulomb per gram and in case of neutron it's represented by n 01 with 0 is the charge and 1 is the mass discovered by cadwick charge it having no charge and the mass is assumed to be 1.675 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg or 1.675 into 10 to the power minus 24 g equal to the mass of proton and e over m ratio for a neutron is taken as 0 study the properties and origin of cathode ray and anode rays and all the other topics studied in this video in next video we will study rutherford nuclear model of atom its effect electromagnetic wave theory black body radiation and photoelectric effect please like and subscribe the channel for the latest updates thank you